Rudy Van Gelder's name appears after titles of landmark jazz albums by Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Wayne Shorter, Sonny Rollins and many others. But who exactly is he? Rudy Van Gelder was a renowned audio engineer who played a critical role in shaping the sound of jazz music in the 1950s and 60s. Van Gelder's work was important for several reasons. First and foremost, he was a master of capturing the essence of live jazz performance in the studio. He used innovative techniques to create a warm, natural sound that conveyed the energy and spontaneity of the musicians. He also had an unparalleled attention to detail, which allowed him to achieve a level of clarity and precision in his recordings that was unmatched at the time. Van Gelder was also known for his close collaborations with the musicians he worked with, which helped create a comfortable and creative atmosphere in the studio. All of these factors combined to make Van Gelder's recordings some of the most iconic and influential in the history of jazz. Van Gelder began recording jazz musicians in the 1950s and quickly established himself as one of the premier recording engineers in the industry. During the 1950s and 60s, he engineered numerous albums for various labels including Blue Note, Prestige and Impulse. Some of these records are widely recognised as classics, such as John Coltrane's A Love Supreme, Miles Davis's Walkin', Herbie Hancock's Maiden Voyage, Sonny Rowland's Saxophone Colossus and Horace Silver's Song For My Father. Right from the beginning, it was evident that Van Gelder's recording approach for jazz music was centered around the genre's improvisational nature and the inherently vibrant energy it creates. It's an improvisation of the moment, and uh, if I m make a mistake, I, it's possible I could destroy the performance, or at least lessen its impact. Uh, I think that is the most the uh, unique and difficult thing about jazz. It's music of the moment. They make another take, uh, it's not the same. It'll be different, perhaps better, perhaps not as good. But it's each, each performance is a unique effort, and that's the hardest part. This excerpt from Richard Capeless's RVG Legacy website beautifully captures Van Gelder's approach. As a listener, if your relationship with a record were likened to that of an audience member at a jazz club, Rudy moved you from sitting somewhere in the middle to the front row. Producer Michael Kaskuna explains, Rudy loved the way music sounded live. He'd go home from a concert and feel that records didn't really sound like the live show. He thought he could make records better. He changed the way jazz was heard on record by making it closer to the live experience. Van Gelder built his own recording studio in Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey, which became a prominent center for jazz recording during the 1960s and 70s. It got so busy that I had to assign each label its own day. So no matter what happened, they would come in that day. And that worked for quite a while, actually, uh, because otherwise it was everybody, I had a balance, people scared of the musicians and so forth. So what happened, I would assign Monday, for example, uh, to Savoy, Tuesday to Vox, Wednesday to Prestige. And Vox, I remember one time, had two days a week. And then Alfred for Blue Note, he, he would get Friday. And every Saturday I got a headache. He was unique compared to other recording engineers of the time in that he enjoyed ownership of the entire recording and post-recording process. This control gave him the opportunity to ensure that the final records reflected the sound of the original tape recording, with each record bearing his hallmark, a small RVG inscribed into the runout area. Owning his own studio enabled him to have authority over the sound of a record, allowing him to refine his skills and establish himself as the top audio engineer in the industry. Van Gelder was known for his meticulous attention to equipment, often building his own amplifiers and modifying recording equipment to suit his needs. This was all done with the aim of producing a very specific sound for the recordings. When people talk about my albums, they often say the music has space. I tried to reproduce a sense of space in the overall sound picture. I used specific microphones located in places that allowed the musicians to sound as though they were playing from different locations in the room, which in reality they were. This created a sensation of dimension and depth. He allegedly often recorded musicians in the middle of the night as he found the studio was quieter and the atmosphere was more conducive to creativity. He was also highly secretive about his recording methods, leaving fans and critics to speculate about his techniques. He went as far as moving microphones out of frame when bands were being photographed in the studio, or he'd intentionally mislabel or mismatch brands of microphones, housings and stands to maintain secrecy. 
Being at the forefront of recording technology was very important to Van Gelder. He was one of the first engineers in the United States to use state-of-the-art Neumann microphones because, in his own words, a Neumann could capture sounds that other microphones couldn't. He also pioneered the use of close miking techniques, peak limiting and tape saturation to imbue the music with an added sense of immediacy. Van Gelder's recording techniques were admired by fans for their transparency, clarity, realism and ability to achieve greater volume on his LPs while minimising tape hiss and vinyl surface noise. A discerning ear is needed to notice the subtle nuances that distinguish Van Gelder's recordings from those of other audio engineers. Let's use Sonny Rollins as a case study. Rollins is a remarkable saxophonist who collaborated with Van Gelder on several albums. In 1957, Rollins released his first album under the Riverside label, The Sound of Sonny, which did not feature Van Gelder's involvement. Let's listen to a track from this album, What Is There To Say? The Sound of Sonny was engineered by Jack Higgins, a highly experienced audio engineer who had worked with other legendary jazz musicians such as Thelonious Monk, Kenny Dorham, Max Roach and Cannibal Adderley. The featured track, What Is There To Say, is a ballad that showcases a slow, expressive melody played over a series of lush chordal changes. Rollins's tenor saxophone performance is marked by its rich, full-bodied sound and emotional expressiveness. By contrast, let's move on to You Don't Know What Love Is from Rollins' landmark album Saxophone Colossus, which was released a year prior to The Sound of Sunny with Prestige Records and engineered by Rudy Van Gelder. Once again, Rollins showcases his virtuosity and expression in You Don't Know What Love Is, another slow ballad with blues influences. I purposely selected similar tracks from the same artist released in the same year and performed by quartets consisting of saxophone, drums, piano and double bass. This was done to highlight the differences in the sound quality of the final product and, consequently, the effect of Van Gelder's involvement. If we listen to two more excerpts from these tracks, while considering various aspects of the sounds, such as breadth, depth, scale, space, immediacy, warmth and closeness, all of which have been previously discussed, we can better understand the contrast. <laughs> Van Gelder's contribution in creating a more well-rounded and fuller recording on Saxophone Colossus is emblematic of his broader body of work. Rudy Van Gelder's legacy lives on today. His recordings continue to inspire new generations of musicians and his sound has become the standard by which all other jazz recordings are judged. He won a Grammy Trustees Award in 2012 and received the Audio Engineering Society's Gold Medal in 2013. Even after his death in 2016, his influence on jazz recording remains strong. So the next time you listen to an album he's worked on, take a moment to appreciate the work of Rudy Van Gelder, the man who shaped the sound of jazz music. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for drummers or other musical topics you'd like me to cover, just leave a comment below. Thank you.